All right, so one of the things that you are going to be asked to do, it's a little bit more focused. One of the things you're going to be asked to do on the assignment with analyzing is to plug numbers in, so to evaluate the function. So I'm going to ask you to find the function evaluated at negative 5 and the function evaluated at 3. So which of the three pieces am I allowed to plug in negative 5? The first one. So negative 5 is an <coughs> x value that's less than negative 2. And so the only place I can plug it in is into the first function. So if I plug in a negative 5 right here, what do I get? Negative 5. Now this one is one that shows up on our graph, so we can actually check it. And when I plug in negative 5, I get a y value of negative 5. And so that means I was able to do it by plugging it in algebraically. But I could also look at my answer graphically and see it that way. Uh, what about if I try to plug in 3? Which of the three pieces can I plug in 3? The last one. So if I plug in 3, I get the square root of negative 3. Can I square root negative 3? No. So we say undefined. You could try to plug it in, but it's not going to work. Undefined. Okay. For B, I'm going to ask you to just look at the graph and say what the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts are. So can anyone see any x-intercepts on this graph? Negative 2 for sure. And I see one more. 0, 0 right here. Okay. And then what's the y-intercept? Yeah, 0, 0. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for part C, we're going to find the domain and the range. So if we look right here, then it looks like we have all the numbers that are less than negative 2. We have negative 2, and we have all the numbers greater than negative 2, right? That's what it looks like. But then when you look at the picture, where does the graph stop? It starts, it stops at... Stirps. I said that. <laughs> it stops at zero because you have a square root. And so even though you could plug in some positive values, when you plug in negative of a positive value, that's an issue, right? So it actually stops at zero. So the um, values that we're going to have for the domain are going to be from negative infinity. All these negative values, negative two is okay, negative one, everything up to zero, but nothing past that. So we're going to say the domain is from negative infinity to zero and I'm going to include 0. Yeah. Yeah. So when I looked over here, this made me think that maybe all the x values were going to get used. But then when I looked at my picture, I realized that all of these x values are a problem because in the last piece, if we square root a negative version of a positive number, then that's the same as square rooting a negative. So I knew that none of these values would work. And the domain describes the x values that are allowed. And so when I looked at my picture, I could see negative infinity was the far left part of the graph. I could see all these negative numbers are working. It looks to me like negative 2 might not work, but then I can see a point right here where negative 2 does work. And then these little negative values right in here work, and 0 works but nothing passed to zero. And so that's why I said negative infinity to zero. Okay. All right, the range is a little bit harder to write. So we can definitely write the first piece. How do I write the first piece for the range? Negative infinity up to negative two. Should I include negative two? No, so negative infinity up to negative two, don't include the negative two. And then I have a little gap where the y values are not used. And then what's the next lowest y value that you can see? Zero. Can you include zero? Yes. So then zero, two. And then what's the very highest y value you can see? One and a half. OK. For, this, for the purpose of this worksheet, um, if you have a case like that, you're just going to make your best guess and then call it good. OK, don't stress too much if it looks like a decimal. All right, there's our range. Are we okay with the range? That was a little bit more difficult. Are we okay? Yeah. What's your question on it? 
just from right here, this dot right here. Yeah. We, it might be a little less than one and a half, but it's okay. When we have a decimal of doing that, it's fine. Why did I put a parenthesis around the one and a half? Yeah, it's an open circle. It's a hole, so it's not truly there. Okay. Uh, part D is asking about absolute maximums and absolute minimums. So is there a very highest point to the graph? Very highest. Yes. Yes, but it's a hole. So does it count? No. no. So we're going to say absolute max is none. Is there a point that is the very lowest part of the graph? No, because it's an arrow. Arrows don't count. Okay, so we have no absolute min because it goes down forever. Okay, so absolute min, none. Next, we're going to label our um, increasing and decreasing. So what is this x value right here? <coughs> Negative infinity. What is this x value? Negative 2. Okay. What is this x value right here? Negative 2. What is this x value right here? 0. Okay. So from this x to this x, if we put a little stick figure, what's he doing? Increasing. And then if we put a little stick figure here, he's balancing on a ball. He's not increasing or decreasing, so we ignore that one. If we put a little stick figure here, what's he doing? Decreasing. He's sliding down a little bit. Okay, so we have an increasing interval and a decreasing interval. And what should I write for increasing? And what should I write for decreasing? Okay. So did you guys notice how when we have a little point, we just ignore it? It's not increasing or decreasing. It's just there. Okay. All right. For part F, we say if it's even or odd, and a little reminder, even means that it's symmetric to the X, not the X, the Y. And odd means it's symmetric to the origin. So it might be good to, when you are working on the assignment to have that written down somewhere because I don't want you to have to plug in the negative x every time when you could just check it from the picture. Um, and then typically what I said in the notes about even and odd and checking the symmetry is that typically nothing is there. We have stuff there for nice like polynomial functions and for different parent functions. For piecewise functions, pretty much, and, and that's not to say that there's not some exceptions, because there are, but for piecewise, generally speaking, we're going to say definitely not, okay? So this one, you cannot fold it over the y-axis and say it's the same on either side. You can't put your pencil here and spin it around and say it is exactly the same as when I had it right side up. And so we are going to say that it is neither. It is not even or odd. Um, to check even and odd, we check to see if it was symmetric to the y. We check to see if it was symmetric to the origin. So we already know that's not true. Um, it is not symmetric to the x because you can't fold it this way. And so we're going to say none. So the reason that I'm still having you do those parts, even though they're probably not going to work for these graphs, is that these are just normal characteristics that people look for. So even if it doesn't apply in this situation, it's still good to know that those are things you typically look for. Does that make sense? Say that again. G. So to check for F, that was checking even and odd. When you check for even, we're actually looking at symmetry. When we checked for odd, we're actually looking at symmetry. So then we, when we go to part G and we're looking at symmetry, we already know that two of them didn't work anyway. So the only other symmetry I had to check for was the x-axis symmetry, if it can fold this way, and I see that it can't. And so that's how I went straight to a none. So these two are going to be kind of boring on the sheet because they are typically going to be always the same answer. Okay. All right, um, H. So H was if there were discontinuities. 
So discontinuities, remember, is if you have just a hole in the middle of a line, you would say that's a removable discontinuity. You could have one graph and then a gap, and then another graph, that's a jump discontinuity. And those are the two discontinuities that we see in piecewise functions, okay? And I said that jump was more common than anything else. So right here, I can see that we have a jump discontinuity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say jump discontinuity at x equals negative two. So a jump discontinuity at x equals negative two. So a discontinuity means that if I try to trace it with my finger, I can't. I have to trace it with my finger, jump up here, then jump up there, then trace it with my finger again, okay? So anytime you have to pick your paper off, your pencil off the paper to draw, but that means it is not continuous. If you can follow it with your pencil the whole way without picking up your pencil, then it would be continuous, okay? So jump discontinuity at x equals negative 2. Okay. Yeah? What's the difference between a jump and then a removable? Um, a removable discontinuity would be like this. So as you're drawing it, you just go over that and you keep going. So that's like a hole. It's called removable because if I took another point and filled this in, then it would be continuous. Okay. So a jump is where it goes to one and then it jumps to the other one. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So I was the boundedness. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. You're good. So for the jump, what is like both? So the only time it's considered, yes. So jump just means that there's space. There's space in between. <laughs> a hole, when it's, just a, when it's just a point that has not been filled in, that's the only time it's removable. It happens sometimes in piecewise, but it's still not very common. Jump happens in almost every piecewise function. So that's very common. The hole is not as common, where it's just sitting there all by itself in the middle. Yeah. You're good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's the fact that the jump part is the space in the middle. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. So I just talks about if it's bounded. Um, and bounded, remember, means that you have a point that you don't go past. That's how you know it's bounded. So does this graph go down forever? Yes. yes. So it is not bounded below because it goes down forever. Does this graph go up forever? No. So that means it is bounded above. So if it does not go a certain direction forever, that means that it is bounded. This one is bounded above because it does not go up forever. Okay. All right. So J for this one, our end behavior, we're gonna say as, not X, as X goes left forever. So as we look at the left side of the graph, what is the function doing? It's going down. So as we look at the left side of the graph, the function is going down, and how do I write that? negative infinity, okay? As x goes to the right forever, what do we notice about the right side? We look at the right side. Does it go to the right forever? No, so I'm gonna cross that one out for this problem. That one doesn't make sense for this particular problem, okay? Or you could say, as x goes right forever, the graph is undefined. There's nothing there, okay? All right. Um, now, do you feel like you're ready to try some on your own, or do you feel like you should maybe do another one where you can ask questions? Another, okay, so let me hand out the assignment, and then we'll start it together. Okay, so part A, we're going to do G of negative 5 and G of 3. Okay, so if you're going to plug in negative 5, where do you get to plug it in? The first one. So if we do negative 5 plus 3, what does that give us? Negative 2. 
And then negative 2 to the 4th is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Positive 16, good. Okay. And that's not on the graph, so we can't confirm it with a graph. G of 3, so we're plugging in 3. Which one do we get to plug a 3 into? The last one, because it says it can equal 3 right there. So if we do the square root of 3 minus 3, we get 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Okay. So plug in 3, you get 0. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to look for the x and the y-intercepts. So x-intercept, y-intercept. Okay. What do we notice about x-intercept? Yeah, so negative 3 right here and positive 3 over there. Okay. What about the y-intercept? 4. Four. Uh, part C is domain and range. Okay, so if we look over here, this is saying all the numbers less than negative 2, negative 2 to 3, and everything bigger than 3. So are we skipping anything? No. If we look on the graph, does it look like there's any x values that get skipped? No. So what are we going to say for our domain? Perfect. <coughs> and for these particular problems, that's very um, going to be very common for your answers, except if you have a graph that has a square root in it. You always have to be careful of those square root graphs because we know that whatever is underneath the square root sign has to be greater than or equal to zero. We remember that from the first unit, right? Okay. For the range, we're going to go from the bottom of the graph to the top. We want to see what y values get used. So what's the very smallest y value? Zero. And then it goes up, right? And I see this arrow means we're going to go up forever, and this arrow means we're going to go up forever. So we know it's going up forever. Are there any y values that look like they get skipped? No. So 4 gets skipped right here, but 4 is hit right there. So 4 is definitely included. So we're going to say that our range is from 0 <coughs> to infinity. It is okay to struggle with range. I think it's one of the harder things we learn because I, there's so many different situations. So if you struggle with that and you need to ask questions, I totally understand. Okay. All right. D says absolute max or absolute min. So since we have arrows going up, I'm going to say there's no absolute max. But I can see multiple absolute lowest points. Do you guys see how I can see more than one? OK, so what are the absolute lowest points? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say 3, 0, and Negative 3, 0, yeah. So those both count as the absolute lowest because they're the same amount of low. So we can have more than one. Okay. Um, e is where we do our increasing and decreasing. I'm going to come up here to write E. So what do we label on our picture to make our lives easier? The stick figure. We're also going to put what numbers? Where the x values. What's the x value right here at the arrow? Negative infinity, right? And I'm not doing a positive infinity because that means it's going up, but that's a y. So I'm thinking about a negative infinity because it goes to the left. Okay. What's the x value right here? Negative 2. Do I need to know this x value right here? Yes. Why do I need to know that one? because it, it's where it switches. You see that? It was going down, now it's going up. So it switches right there, that's why we need this one. Negative three. All right, what's the x value right here? 
Negative 2. What's the x value over here? Huh? 3. What's the x value right here? 3. And what's the x value over here? Positive. And Cammie, you're right, that one's constant. It just hit me what you said. All right, so what's this? If we put a stick figure right here, what's he doing? Decreasing real fast. And then he hits this minimum value. And what does he do for just a very little period of time? Increase. And then he hops up here and he's constant. Does this remind you a little bit of like a Mario video game? Like do, 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 do. And then it goes down and like hops up and then hops down. And what is he doing right here? Increasing. It's not a very steep increase, but it's still going up. It's not quite constant. Okay. Now, what I will say about increasing and decreasing and constant is that piecewise functions are about as hard as these get. So you guys are doing like the worst of the worst right now. Okay. Usually increasing and decreasing are not this bad. Okay. So we've got three types of answers we're going to write out. All right. So we've got decreasing and we've only got one decreasing, right? Mm -hmm. What should I put for decreasing? Okay. And then I only have one constant. How do I write that? Negative two to three. Okay. And then I have two sets of increasing. What are my two sets? So, and make sure we do the set on the left before we do the set on the right. So we have to do this little piece first. So how do we write the little piece? Three to negative two, and then how do we do this piece? Okay. All right, so that one was rough. Um, F and G, these are the ones that are going to go pretty easily. So F is just even or odd, and even means you're checking to see if it's reflected over the y axis. So is this one symmetric over the y axis? No. Um, is this one reflected? over, well, I guess spun around the origin, so we can be symmetric to the origin? No. So we're going to put neither for F, and then G is saying, we already checked the first two types of symmetry, so those aren't working. If we check symmetry with the x-axis, what do we find? Not. So I'm going to say it is neither even or odd, and it has no symmetry. Very common answers for these types of problems. Um, for H, we're looking at discontinuities. So we're thinking about if I were to draw the picture from left to right, how many times do I have to pick up my pencil? So if I do this, I am tracing, 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 and I have to pick up my pencil. So that means I have a discontinuity there. So what kind of discontinuity do I have? Jump. All right, so I'm going to say jump discontinuity. at x equals, what's the x right here? Negative two. And then I'm tracing, tracing, tracing. I have to pick up my pencil again. And that's at x equals three, and those were both jumps. So if I have to pick up my pencil, that means it's a jump. All right, so two jump discontinuities, are we okay with that? Okay, so now we're gonna do the boundedness. So bounded, Below means there's a point, there's a lowest point, you can't go any lower. Bounded above means there's a point where you can't go any higher. So do we see any boundedness? Bounded below, there's a point where you can't go any lower than that. So bounded below. Okay. And then last, we're going to describe the end behavior. How do I start that? Okay, so as we look to the left, what do we see on the left? It's going up. So as we look to the left, f of x is going infinity because it's up. We labeled it as a negative infinity because we were labeling the left part. We weren't labeling the fact that it went up. Okay, and then as x goes to positive infinity, so as we look to the right, what do we see? The graph is going up, and so that means f of x is going to positive infinity. Very good. 
So that was a lot of things. I'm not going to make you do all of these clearly. That would be too many. Yes. Yeah, good call. I've been doing f of x for literally every problem, but you're exactly right. I should have done g of x this time. That means I have to go fix my answer keys. Okay. Um, how many problems? So we, we get out in five minutes. So if we're thinking about for the next five minutes and for homework tonight, how many problems do we think is fair to get some practice in but not feel stressed? Four. Four? Four? Four. Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to say. Maybe do the two on the front page because there's so much space. So those are nice to write. Um, so you're going to do one and two. One and two and five and six. Did I sound like a cheerleading coach? One and two and five and six. All right. One, two, five, six. I talked really loud, so that couldn't be heard to ruin the recording. <laughs> 